Hello everybody and welcome to Tim Time Projects again. Uh, hey, what would a, a month be or two months without taking apart the TS940 again? You know, I was looking at it a couple days ago. I was actually looking, working a 10 meter net and uh, I noticed that 10 meters kind of sounded a little bit doggy. It always has. But you know, it works. I'd, I'd pick, I could pick up the signals, but it had a little steam on them. So, basically, in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I found with that. And also, if you've ever tried to do an alignment on this and tried to follow the manual, it's total insanity. So, there was a couple of things I found about that, but I really have never tackled a full alignment on this just because of that. Uh, I'm trying to compile some of the crazy things I find in, in the uh, instructions. One of the things that's a sore spot on this is that's, that noise, the, the issue's probably coming from the RF board. And I know we've taken that out a couple of times. The RF board is notorious for having bad solder joints. And in fact, years ago when this wouldn't put anything out on AM and very low on upper sideband, it was a solder joint with issue on the RF board. I didn't do the whole board. I went through and found some questionable things and things I moved that caused that to uh, peak back up. But anyhow, we'll take a look at the schematic now and maybe try and work some things out and figure out why we're seeing what we're seeing. Or maybe we won't figure that out and things may have to come apart. So, let me get things set up on the computer. All right, let's see, how's it, how's it looking there? Oh, pretty good. Okay. Look at the very beginning. Here, here's the antenna. The connection coming in goes into the RF unit where it says antenna. So, let's just look at the RF unit real quick. That's the, the entire schematic of everything. So we're going to hone in a little bit further to the RF board. So here's the RF board. Let's find out where it says antenna. So I'm trying to make this so we can see things. Okay. Here's antenna coming into the RF board. And as you can see, it goes in. This stuff here, this is the ground connection, all this stuff here. You can see it goes right to ground. The antenna comes up. And it pretty much goes, depending on if you have the, uh, which antenna plug you have connected. There's a switch on the back for shortwave, for if you put the shortwave listener antenna we're not going to do that. We're just talking about going through the regular <coughs> antenna connection. And basically, if you go back to the first schematic, oh, what the heck is that? Why? Oh, let me see why that came on. Okay, got rid of that annoying thing. So anyhow, let's see, where were we? Uh, here's the antenna. Yeah, find out where I am. Here, let me change color so it sticks out a little more. Here's the antenna guy right here. Well, I thought I changed it to red. There we go. The antenna guy right here comes in. It goes out through this, through the transmit receive relay. Then it goes back out. This is just to receive. It goes back out through the external antenna switch. And we'll look at that. Here's the external antenna switch where the signal would be coming back out right here. I'll change this one to red too. Uh, I'll be right here. Goes across, across, through the switch to either choose the 
receive antenna or not. We choose not. So it comes back out, goes right back here this way. Through here. Let's see, that doesn't change. And there it goes this way, back up. Do -do -do -do. Back up. And then back into the RXA terminal on the RF board. So now all that for nothing. Back to the RF board. The uh, RXA terminal is right here. This guy right here. These relays here, there's two relays here, and that's the controls for them down here. Those relays are for the uh, attenuator. One's 10, one's 20, both together 30. So you see the signal comes in. I find my little guy. Well, sorry. Let me undo that. I always have a hard time finding my cursor. There it is. Okay. So the signal comes in. Basically, this is the antenna signal. It's coming in, going through here. Goes through here, this relay's touching for zero. Comes right through here, straight down, right in here, back up to here. This relay's touching for zero. When I say zero, I mean zero uh, attenuation. Okay, and then here's a nice little connection right here. So if you're with me so far, basically I see this little connection that I just made right here electronically not RF but from a DC perspective is the exact same as the center conductor of the antenna. Would you agree so far? I mean we've followed a solid line from the antenna all the way to here. So here is our area of interest. Uh, if you follow this this a little bit further along you see here it comes through the uh, that would be the IF traps, and then it goes into the filters on the, well, the different filters on the radio. So this is where the signal goes into the radio. But right here, where I drew my little mark, and I said is our area of interest, and let me see if I can find it again. Right this guy here. The reason I say that's our area of interest is I follow this down, and follow it down, and it appears to connect to MKR, which I believe is the uh, the marker signal. And I think probably the you. first thing I want to do is is own test it out. So what I'll do is start right at the antenna lead itself out here and check the center conductor of the antenna. And it basically should show me zero ohms all the way through to this point right here. I should have zero ohms. I should also have zero ohms on this side of this capacitor right here. So a good place to start. The only thing is that throws that that all out of whack is the fact that it seems to work fine on just about everything but we're on 21, 21 megahertz and up or maybe it's not working fine and I just think it is uh, anyhow my crazy rambling for that so I want to go and show you something on the alignment process too why I've never really fully aligned this radio and what I'm working through. Okay, one of the <clears throat> one of the things that I find here, I, I mean, it's I haven't done it yet, but it's not. I'm not going to say it's wrong. It's just sheer craziness. Basically, I want you to build a sweep detector, a detector, and sweep a whole band of frequencies, but they don't really tell you what all frequencies to sweep. Uh, 
it's really kind of open-ended with that. But what they want you to do is adjust all these inductors to make your output look kind of like that. Well, I tell you, L2 and L40 are IF traps, and I think you could adjust those separately. And that would take a lot of stuff out. And maybe just leave you with adjusting three like on the rest of them. I just think it it's really hard to achieve that when you have so many things to adjust, but that's just me. But so it goes on. So here they tell you, okay, make it look like that by adjusting these on your RF board. Okay, I can live with that. So you gotta go do go down and do that. And then it gives you all the bandpass filters and everything. And, So where is it? Let's see. Uh, let me see. Oh, here we go. The IF trap coil right here. First off, it tells you the band is 1.400 megahertz. There's really not a band for that. I think they mean 14 megahertz. Okay, we'll take care of that. RF, L2. Set coil all the way inside. And I'd be okay with that. L40, adjust min AF output. I'd be okay with that. But don't remember at the beginning, they had already told us to adjust to make the waveform look a certain way, but now all of a sudden they want us to do it like this. So I'm not sure why. And set the core all the way inside. And then there's nothing else that goes any further that tells you to do anything more with the core. You just set it inside. So why even have an adjustment for it? I think what's, what this is supposed to be, maybe take this line away. And here's how you set both of them. You start with the core all the way inside and you adjust for minimum AF output. I just don't understand why if they wanted you to set the core all the way inside and, and that you're done with it. Well, that's not really even an alignment. That's just tightening a screw. Uh, but if you look here, there, there's nowhere where it goes any further and tells you to do anything more with L2. So I'm assuming, here, L2, but that's on the control board. I'm assuming, and you know when you assume, that they mean uh, that's your how you start with both of them. You set them all the way in and then set them for minimum uh, audio frequency output. Basically you're just making sure that, that you're trapping the, the IF frequency. So then, this was one of the major contention areas. Where was it? <coughs> S meter. Just the way they describe things, the bottom step here. Adjust meter needle for mechanical zero point. Okay, I, they have different points. One's the mechanical zero and one's, but, but just the way they say it kind of threw me all off. And then it tells you here Set VR1 to counterclockwise. So it's on the RF board, VR1 to counterclockwise. And if you go all the way through the rest of this, nowhere else does it tell you on the RF board to do anything with VR1. So is that another one of those things we just set all the way counterclockwise and leave it? Uh, this one I actually believe it's supposed to be on the IF board, this should be IF. You set VR1 all the way to counterclockwise, then you adjust it for S1 after you put this uh, 8 dB from the signal generator. So this step is correct, IF VR1, and I believe this should say IF, not RF. Uh, I just, I spent months scouring this book trying to find, well, where do I make the rest of the adjustment? Uh, so a lot of places I find that there was one area where it tells you to check the frequency but it's it's way outside of the amateur band so I don't know how you can really check for any output because this radio won't output unless you've 
played with it or done one of the Mars uh, updates to it. Now this radio here, I think that the guy, not the, maybe not the guy that I got it from, but somebody along the lines was trying to make it uh, a CB radio. I found a lot of things that were modified to a point where it wasn't seeming to work very well on the amateur bands. Uh, and that could that could well be the reason why the whole 21 through 28, why there's something in that area that's not working right. Uh, but anyhow, I digress. So anyhow, you know what I what I said I want to do. So it'll just be now getting the TS 940 out and taking it apart and doing the own test. Uh, you know, with springtime here and cutting grass and took one of the old, one of the kids for a. Uh, driver's license and been busy with all that so trying to get a little bit of time and now it's, it's late at night as you can see it's already 11 20 some uh, in the evening so I, I don't know if I'll be doing it tonight I think that was all I wanted to cover for now but when I actually do do the align do do when I do do the alignment I, I want to take better notes on this on this and, and maybe come up with some stuff. It's hard, the, the alignment is in sections and I, I've gotten through most of the first section. Uh, I didn't get through the receive section. Yeah, and I got through most of the transmit section because I that's when I wasn't putting anything out. But again, there was there were sections in there where I just couldn't go any further because it didn't make any sense. Uh, I learned a lot from this Kenwood, but uh, <laughs> obviously not enough. But anyhow, so uh, I'll be back. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, <clears throat> back to the testing. So to do a quick own test on some of the circuitry, I figured what I can do is, if you look right here, this is the antenna, the antenna lead. So if the antenna lead comes all the way up here, like so. Move it down a little bit. There we go. That comes all the way up here, like so. Down through here, this switch is the transmit receive switch. So in receive, it should be closed. And how do I know that? Because I'm following, if you look over on this side, and follow it down, RV for receive voltage. That puts the 15 volts or whatever it is on the line for receive, so that would pull the... Uh, the relay shot. So, um, let me find it again. Okay, so anyhow, we'll know this will be shot at the time when the radio is turned on in receive. So down we go, and it comes out the EXT antenna or EXT port for external antenna. So now, off to our other schematic. This is as bad as the uh, icon. Let's see. No, not quite as bad. Complete schematic right here. All right. We already kind of said, we looked at this, so it comes out of the external antenna port, which is right here, and it's going to run along through here, sorry, on the outermost line, I'm not real good at drawing this, but, so on the outermost line right here, goes to this switch, this switch in the normal mode is shorted between two heavy black terminals, well I'm going to short it between that terminal and this terminal. So basically it's going to go to here. So if you follow it backwards, it goes from here through the center terminal of the switch, back up, back up, and into the external antenna. So looking at that, that means that there should be continuity between the center conductor pin of the antenna over here and the center conductor pin of the RX antenna right here. So, I got the ohmmeter set up. I have a piece of coax and I have a jumper on, I mean a uh, alligator clip on the center pin of the coax and I also have a piece of stereo coax, you know, the uh, R with the RCA jack on it. And I have the other lead of the ohmmeter on there. So let's get the ohmmeter where I can put it. Hang on, let me mount it somewhere. All right, like I said, I already have the leads connected. You can see, uh, you, know, you probably can't see how wires running everywhere, but uh, 
Okay, so right now it's on OL. So the first thing we need to do to close the relay is turn the radio on, make sure it's not in send, turn the radio on, send receive. Okay, let me turn it on. Okay, it's still showing OL for over limits, which means it's open. But that's okay because I haven't thrown the switch in the back yet. So let me see if I can, I think I can reach back here and do this. And then that, that should show continuity. Okay, there we go, through the switch. So, oh, less than an ohm, half, a, half an ohm. So they show some continuity and then we'll make sure that we're right with the transmit receive switch. We'll even, if you can see it here. You like turn that back on so you can see it and I'll turn it off and it should go close yeah so there we go so we know now that everything works at least as far as the relay the transmit receive relay and the external antenna switch and the jacks work so our next stop would be anything inside on the RF board that comes through so it's gonna be those little little tiny cables that are on the board that go from uh, the RXA and and everything else, those cables, we'll have to check those. But probably the easiest way to do it is we already know if we jump onto the uh, antenna jack, we can probably test some things on the RF board for continuity, mainly up at that capacitor I showed you and also at the uh, at the input to the, well, I guess it would be the output to the um, IF traps. So I may take this out and we'll give that a shot, but it's been one of those days. I got some grass cut. I have a water leak in the front yard, which uh, seems to be coming from the uh, the curb box from the water company. So hopefully it'll be theirs and not mine. Uh, and then I have some other work I have to do today. But maybe I can get this and, and we'll, we'll we'll take a look at it uh, and see something. I was I was hoping that I'd find some continuity issues like right off the bat, so that uh, at least I had a direction to go in. This will be one of those things where probably everything will look fine and lead us to another uh, another dead end so okay let me uh, let me pause and th take that doohickey out of there okay and you've never seen this before but uh, this is the case off of the TS 940 ha uh -huh. okay so what I did was uh, I have my test lead one test lead going in to the uh, center conductor of the antenna and it would go through the relay and through all that switching and then into the RXA port, which I have right here. And if you look, less than a resistance in there. So, uh, all in all, pretty good. So next, I want to see what I have on the board. So let me find a good place to actually check it on the board. And I'll show you where we're looking here. Well, I don't want to show you while I'm doing this. I'll put the schematic up and you can look at that. Now, I did have to power up the radio, of course, to close that relay. But um, so what I want to look for is C1 in here, and that'll be a good test from the antenna to just the input, the, the one spot that I wanted to get. So let me find C1, and then we'll check it. And if it's low, then I'll show you what we're looking at on the board. Okay, a couple of things to show you here before we go any further. Uh, if you look at the schematic, it lists L1 and L2 as being variable uh, chokes or coils. But if you look here, L1 is actually, I mean, you, I guess you could vary it by stretching the coils out, but it's more like its more like a fixed coil of wire that's placed in there. I'll try and zoom in so you can see what I'm looking at. my finger where we want to be so I know there it is so um, and more important than that there's something I want to show you if it zooms in oh okay there we go right here is L2 and L2 looks like that slug is wand way in there bottom dot almost almost like somebody was trying to do an alignment on it and followed the manual uh, I still think that's wrong, and I think we may end up experimenting with that before I put it all back together. I don't think that the uh, alignment process is to wind it all the way in and leave it go. Um, so let's see. So uh, 
that's that one, and L40, I believe, is the, I'm going to double check, but I thought that was the other one the, that gets aligned with uh, the IF trap. So here's, I'll look for later, but just thought that was kind of interesting how that's wound all the way in there, which maybe that's where it is, I don't know. But, um, and that's the other one. So here's C1, this little guy back in here, and I don't know if you can still see the ohmmeter. This guy way back in here, you can just see the edge of it. So I'll get on that and we'll watch the ohm meter, but uh, I, I think it's going to be okay. But again, like I said, with these boards, it could be a solder joint problem. And just me messing around in here made, might have made the problem go away and until I put it all back together and try to use it. And two months later, it starts again. So we'll try to manipulate things while I'm doing this. You can see the meter there. I'm going to get in on that cap and we'll see if we can. There it is, 0.8 ohms, so that's exactly what we expected. So let's see. Let me see. So now if I put the tone on, make sure I have it turned on still. Turn the cow on. You know, So now, without the antenna, it works. It works perfect. It's on nine without any uh, attenuation. Let me just see if I mess with this capacitor here a little bit. Even the coil. I don't know. It seems really strange. I really want to take a look at the setting of this just to see if that is bottomed out in there. I'll have to look up the, spe uh, the specifications for setting that, that coil. In the meantime, let me see if I can find 40. Let me get my head in the way. Okay, there's 40 up in here inside the shield. That's not bottomed out. That looks like it's about in the center. But I think it's ironic. That's the only one I really see bottomed out. So, like I said, something was probably following the manual. Let me just see if I have a slug adjuster to fit that. I just want to see if it, if it moves in at all. Then we'll definitely know, and then, then we'll have to go from there. All right, that is bottom dot in there. I'll show you. I don't know if you're not really going to be able to see, but... That, uh, that will not budge any more in. It turns out very easily. So, let me look up the specs. I think I have to supply like a 45.05 megahertz signal or something in that and set that for minimum. There's something I actually wanted to try anyhow with adjusting those. But uh, stay tuned. We'll have to work on that later. I got more stuff to do right now around here. I shall return. Okay. So I have a uh, frequency generator back there. And it's putting out 4505. What was it? Yeah, 45.05 megahertz. It says at 80 dB. I'm just feeding a signal into this very low signal that's from one of them. And I'll show you the signal generator. It's actually in the back. And you, can, you can see it right off to the side, right back there. So it's not digital, and it's hard to set it right now. It's at 450471. So it's kind of off and around. But I do have the transmit or the transceiver tuned at 1.400 megahertz, so 1.4. And uh, I'm gonna let you hear the noise. Hopefully, I can get you a little closer here. You can hear the noise, and I'll 
turn the uh, signal generator off. The noise goes away. So, so basically the setting for that is to set both of these filters so that that noise is at a minimum. It says uh, for minimum AF output, I believe, is the verbiage that they use. Let's see. Uh, adjust for minimum AF output. So I'm actually using the uh, the meter on the front here. Let's see if I can. Oops, I just changed the frequency. Let's see if I can use that meter. Just barely off of zero, so, so I don't know how good it will be. So I'm going to try to tune this one out first for minimum AF output. Like I said, it was screwed all the way in. And turn it up a little bit. Well, when I stop there, it doesn't get any better. So we'll take a look at that. And while I'm here, I'll check the one up here that was the L40. I believe that's pretty much the same deal. Yeah, so that one was pretty close to set where it should be. It was the other one that I had an issue with. So now, let's take a listen and see. I don't want to adjust any other filters or anything. I just want to go strictly with that. Let me uh, double check it. frequency drifts on it a little bit. Okay. Alright, that one's good. Sorry for the noise. Okay, so I don't want to change anything else. I want to just troll around and see what I get on the 10 meter band right now. So let me just connect things up differently and I'll be right back. All right, well that definitely improved the signal on 10 meters. Uh, not so much the signal, but I don't want to say people are pulled out of the noise better. So I think what was happening was that uh, the IF was not being blocked into the rest and it was kind of getting reprocessed. Just kind of a crude breakdown of what was happening. Uh, let me turn it down a little bit. But yeah, the signals are definitely coming a lot stronger and I barely get anybody over like a, a nine pounder or a, a S9 signal, if you will, on uh, 10 meters. So. 
this guy's this guy was doing between ten and I mean nine and, and ten over, and now he's kind of fading a little bit. But uh, the the band has definitely picked up, so I, maybe it's that as well. But um, I want to play around here a little bit more and take a little bit more look at things and see, try some of the other bands as well. But both of those sounded fine. Uh, let me look at the marker too. I wanted to look at the calibration. Let's see, I'll turn the marker on. Let me bring it back up. So we'll put it on AM. So here's what's interesting. Now that I have the marker on. Uh, it's almost an S9, but when I put the attenuator on, it still helps it a little bit on this band. So let's see what it does on one of the other bands. But the problem before was I was not getting an S9 at all on any of the, like 29 was terrible. Let's just see, uh, let's just see. And this is, this is the generator, the internal generator marker that I'm referring to in here. So let me just take it up. I don't know if you can see quite what I'm looking at. I'm going to give you a, a bird's eye view, but... Right. I don't want to turn it too much. Um, let's see. So the generator's on right now. It's about an 8 and 3 quarters on 28.5. Let's go up and... 29.5 is about an 8. 27.5 is a 9. About an 8. It's so, all in all, it's all over, but it's better. Oh, that one's 22.5. <laughs> kind of interesting. What was that one? 25 still done really low. But it doesn't increase that much when I turn up the... Uh, attenuator so kind of interesting on that but uh oh aliens there might be some other noise that's causing that so let me look at I'm gonna go down and try some of the other bands and just see how they sound most of them sounded pretty good but it always sounded like there was an overwhelming static in the background that was even though they had strong signals it sounded like they were being covered somewhat Almost like the signal to noise wasn't correct. So, uh, let me see what else I can find. Okay, so what I want to try is I want to throw the, uh, uh, yep, I want to throw this signal back in, back into it, and I'm going to set it up at the 1400 megahertz, 1.4, yeah, 1.400 megahertz. Or, sorry. And uh, wind this one all the way in, adjust that one, then adjust that one. Because once I knock it down with this, I don't, I can't, that's not making a difference anymore. So I just want to double check that I'm, that I'm correct there. So let's go turn on the AM. So actually the radio is at 13996, but the signal generator, the closest I can get it right now, is 45.043. So let's see what I get. Like I said, I'm going to kind of run this one in. Let me make sure I got everything running the way I had it before. Yeah. So let's see. So that one's blowing well up. Yep. So I'll double check that this one on. I believe I had this one where it had to go, but there it is right there. And again, I'm using the S meter as opposed to putting a voltmeter across the speaker or the AF output. So now I'm showing oh 
but in S3, that's as low as I can get it with that. And it actually went down and back up and back down, so that was pretty good. So let's see here, I should be able to... There's an S2, an S1. So it goes to a bottom S1. I'll put some magnification on to really see. Right, and that's probably about the lowest I can get it. this particular si signal generator, I can't feed in a very powerful signal, but I have no attenuation. This this thing here, I don't know if you can see what I'm using, that's an attenuator I built. So if you watch, I can choose my attenuation, give it 20 right off the bat. But I didn't need any. So uh, I think the idea is to try and flood the transceiver with, with that uh, intermediate frequency and then you use these two traps basically to keep it where it has to be and not let it go forward or backward. But it seemed like it definitely made a difference when I kind of just juried it so I'll do it this way and uh, see if it makes a better difference. You know, one's good, one has to be better. I, I don't know. So hang on, let me uh, connect things up and spin it around again. All right. So there's 10, milli uh, 10 meters plugged in again, 28405, and there are all kinds of signals, but like I said, the band probably has opened up a little bit, but uh, I can tell you the signals definitely sound a lot better. Before, like I said, I could pick them up, but they just always seem to have like, like steam on them, so uh, Makes me happy. So I'll, uh, I have like I said, got a ton of things to do before I button it up. I just want to make sure. But, uh, it's good to hear that band opened up again. Let's see something else. Now this picks up on the CB band. So let's try channel 14. Two, seven, one, two, five, ten. That was close. How about we'll just do <laughs> enter. Two, seven, enter. Why? Two, two, seven, one, two, five. There it is. I must not have been pushing hard enough. So that's. AM channel 14 and I just so happen to have a out CB radio walkie talkie here. Old school here. Oh my. That's giving me a plus 20. I've never seen that before. Okay, so I think we'll call that a success and we're going to have to make notation on the actual alignment section for that. All right, it's still laying on its side. Uh, the next thing, I'm going to wrap this video up now and hopefully it wasn't too confusing. But at least you got to see me do something and it seemed like it worked out for the best. So if you're thinking about messing around with yours, uh, hopefully it'll work out as, as well as this. Um, but yeah, the, the next thing I'm going to be cutting a video on is I'm going to attempt to get that meter slam. You know, when you first shut it off, somebody had made a comment about, hey, why don't you fix that? And I thought, you know what, I should have. This many times I've had it apart. So this time before I put it back together, I think I'm going to 
tackle the meter slant looks like a pretty quick easy thing and uh, so we'll give that a shot and uh, I think I did a better job of making a video and that kind of showed everything as I went uh, I just have uh, waiting on on a capacitor to come in I had to order some new capacitors I used the last of mine on the last project so they should be in sometime this week and uh, we'll give that a tackle and see how it works hopefully it'll work for the best and uh, it'll be something for you to try if you want to try it so again thanks for watching and like I said I hope this wasn't too confusing and then hope it helps somebody out see ya